Jiu-Jitsu family, how is everybody doing? Welcome to the Mastery Jiu-Jitsu YouTube channel. I hope you are all doing amazing. Marco Moreno here today, Saturday, July 8, 2023. I'm super happy because I'm going to have the chance to talk with a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt that I follow, that I respect. And his name is Evandro Nunes and he is going to help us. We're going to talk about Jiu Jitsu and maybe his uh, views, his philosophy in life and in Jiu Jitsu, but also he's going to help us um, deconstruct the common beliefs in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu culture. He has a unique view of uh, how uh, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu culture has been uh, developing and um, sometimes there are common beliefs that need to be challenged and Evandro is here to explain us why. How's it going brother? Evandro, welcome to the channel. Thank you for this interview. Thank you Marco. I appreciate the words. Best day of my life and it's a privilege to be here and sharing some concepts and listening from you guys as well so thank you brother brother i i admire you i always follow your post and thank i you. always wonder how is it that it's always the best day of your life i'm are you lying to me right now like <laughs> <laughs> yes are you just saying it or is it really the best day of your life or you just uh is it like a a mental position and then if you mentally believe that your everything will follow bro that's a good question uh, number one is 100 percent is the best day of my life i mean that with every fiber in my body with every vocal cord that i have with every neuro in my brain and every pulsation in my heart brother because i was not like this my growing up it was not like that i was circumstantial i would feel happy when something good would happen, when it was sunny, I would like it. When it was rainy, I would not. It was very much like my, my inside was based on the outside. When I would win a tournament, I would be happy. When I would lose a tournament, I would be upset. When I would perform well in training, I would be happy. When I would not, I would be upset. So it's very much circumstantial. I would hear a song, I would feel happy. When there was no songs around, I would be upset. So, man, it took me forever, bro. And I actually fell uh, into an experience of gratitude when I was in Hawaii. I was actually like 26, if I'm not mistaken. And then I remember, bro, I was 26 years old. And for the first time in my life, I felt a feeling that today I call gratitude. I really believe that I had not experienced gratitude until I was 26 years old. I knew how to say thank you. I knew how to say, hey, I appreciate that. And there was a certain feeling there, but pure raw gratitude, bro, where I looked to the ocean and I felt safe and I felt like I belonged there and I saw new colors shining from the ocean. And then I start crying, brother, bawling, smiling, crying. I fell on my knees, bro. And then that day I was like, yes, this is what it is. And from that point forward, I realized that Regardless of the circumstance, could be a painful one, could be shameful, could be a fearful one. Inside of me, there's that point, that ball of light. And as long as I have that, which is my dignity and my life. Actually, bro, we mm -hmm. all woke up today, Marco. Do you understand, brother? You were Evandro. chosen to wake up today. So there you have it. Yes. What, what was happening in your life uh, that, that day? Were you going maybe through a through a rough patch where you feeling depressed because I've, I've heard of people who is in like extreme positions, like they, they're suicidal and all of a sudden they feel this, this, what you just described. Was that what's happening to you or how do you think this happened? Did it happen out of nowhere? Um, can you tell us more about this particular day that you experienced this gratitude? Yes, I can. At that particular day, I was not experiencing anything that was bad. And I understand what you're saying that there's what they call the sudden enlightenment, right? Like people that are on the on the verge of 
the worst chaos and they experience this love or this gratitude. And that is one way of doing it. With me, it was not like that. It was actually the first time that I was, um, I was financially stable. I was uh, in America. Everything was good in my life. I felt safe. So it was, I accessed that from a different point, right? So there's many ways that we can potentially induce that experience. You can, for example, go to the mountains and fast for a week, deprive yourself from books and music and just get maybe maybe a pen and a paper and just be there with the company of yourself. A lot of people experience that as well doing that. Some people experience with psychedelic drugs. Some people experience with fasting. Some people experience mm-hmm. in chaos. Some people experience like I did randomly at, at the beach by myself, bro, alone, mm-hmm. looking at the ocean. So I, I, I believe that, Marco, that, that this experience might hit us randomly. But mm-hmm. it, it's born from the belief, man, that if one person can feel upset in a certain circumstance and another person can feel happy in, an, in the same circumstance, it shows us that the circumstance is not the causing mm-hmm. of that feeling it's us like think about this for a second let's say we are in a village and then there's this army of vikings invading our village mm-hmm. i can go see two realities being possible one is like oh no marco oh no the vikings are coming they're they're gonna mm-hmm. get us that's one one behavior the other behavior is like marco let's freaking do it my man today's the day we die today's the day that we die fighting and defending mm-hmm. those that we believe grab your sword let's go Mm. same circumstance look I'm, I'm full of goosebumps right now because that's what i would be doing or I, I, although, although we don't know what we would be doing that's what right. resonates to me so the circumstance is the same but people behave differently if that's the case then the power is not on the circumstance the power is where how you decide to uh approach yes. now the question evandro for you is because i i have experienced this bliss moments where man everything is just perfect and i turn to my wife and i say i love you you know but how you maintain because there are days where also like fighting or you know you just something happening somebody dies whatever how do you maintain though you don't maintain marco you don't maintain is is it intellectually and intellectually you don't maintain intellectually i wouldn't i don't know how to do intellectually just so you know I don't know mm-hmm. how to talk myself into feeling it. Let me just put it this way. When I feel grief or when I feel shame, when I my body is, is not flowing on the energy that we're talking about right now, that energy is still present. But I'm just experiencing it from a different point of view. Mm-hmm. I sit with the feeling of grief and shame and fear or whatever, and I be and I'm there. It doesn't feel good in my body. It's like, bro, the perfect example is a cold shower, man. It doesn't feel good, but there's a if you did it before, you can be there and you, exp- you you can experience that pain. And I don't know if it ever happened with you in cold showers, in cold baths, mm-hmm. that you start laughing like like it's it's the same pain, but you just let like start No. No, I haven't right. experienced with cold showers. <laughs> I heard, you know what? I heard, you know, Marty Yossi, the guy from yes. Jiu Jitsu Road Podcast. He just did a, a course with uh, uh, Wim Hof. Yep. The, he got he does the cold showers and the breathing. And uh, after I heard that podcast of his experience, I've been doing, you know, at the end, when I take a shower, at the end, I'm turning the cold, right? But it's summer, so it's not really that cold. But I kind of feel a little bit what you're saying. So I'm, mm-hmm. I haven't been in like a just super cold shower. But it does feel like, you, you know, you are there and you have to breathe. And it's not pleasant, but it's for also Mark, tough, Mark. tough in you, right? Yes. But for example, the Vikings are invading us right now. Is that pleasant? No, they're going to kill us. And but but guess what? It's gonna be awful. You're gonna have to fight me first, and that feeling of excitement is still real under the circumstance of death of someone coming to invade you. Mm-hmm. You, 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 see, you see what I'm saying right here? It's the same thing. If yeah. if that is possible, then when we feel grief or somebody died, man, feel that terrible feeling and honor that moment and cry and in tears. But back there, like I said, there, there's something inside of us that it's unchangeable despite the circumstances, and it's not easy, man. 
I can speak very eloquently about it as if, oh, just do this. That's not what it is. But there's something for us to find inside all of us at any given time. Now, I heard uh, recently Hickson Gracie was uh, diagnosed with Parkinson. And he said, this is a gift of God. This is almost what you are saying, right? Like something that's supposedly terrible, but you decide to approach it as like, great, right? Do you think uh, is, is his jujitsu help him approach that? Can people uh, acquire this uh, enlightenment, as you're saying, through the practice of jujitsu? That's that's what happened to you. Was Mark the answer the, the tool to get to that point? Yes and no. And this is what where we enter the Jiu Jitsu discussion, right, Marco? Because we in the Jiu Jitsu community, we're very much like servants of Jiu Jitsu. We all, oh, Jiu Jitsu is the almighty. Jiu Jitsu changed my life. Jiu Jitsu took me out of addictions. Jiu Jitsu did this for me. And I agree mm -hmm. with that, okay? I need you guys to know that I agree with that. But guess what? Mm -hmm. That was not Jiu Jitsu that did that. It was mm -hmm. you. You chose Jiu Jitsu. Therefore, that practice gave you those benefits. It is possible to achieve that with woodwork. There's carpenters that achieve enlightenment or whatever you want to call through woodwork. There's artists with painting. There's musicians with mm -hmm. piano. True, true, true. There's Buddhists with meditation. So what we do here, and it's very interesting, brother, because although I am on the jiu-jitsu path, and that's the, the martial arts that I chose, and I'm very grateful for it, for my ancestors and people that, that made this possible, I'm also not fooled or blind by the fact that that's what he did. I did it with my own unique experience. Bruce Lee did with other martial arts. Samurais before Bruce Lee did with sword fighting. And it's possible for all of us, but, but at the moment that we put, like, could be a, a legend like Hickson above us, or we put um, Elio Grace above us, or we put Bruce Lee above us, or we put Jiu Jitsu above us, then we disempower, then less likely we we, we to find that thing. Because, like I said, that in, exists inside every human being, despite the circumstances. It's all about finding ways to connect and practice that by not attaching a certain result to that you like i said you can happen you can be you can happen as a black belt you can happen as a blue belt it cannot happen as a black belt it can happen playing the flute it's all about understanding that we are the ones brother and i think that's the core mm -hmm. of my message marco. that you are the one marco i know that you look up to me in, in a few ways i know that you look up for other people in a few ways but it's not me the only my my only job here right now marco i would leave this phone call happily is that I can put a mirror in front of the camera right here. And everything you see in me, and everything you see in Hickson, and everything you see in other, other people that you uh, they love it, it's your projection of something that you admire, they already have inside of you, dormant or not. That ability to speak mm -hmm. the truth, that ability to see. When I speak that's the best day of my life, there's something inside of you that rings, like, eh, like that awakens, and you, and you understand, you're like, man, so that's you right there. That's I'm just mm -hmm. vibrating, or if I or, or I'm not sure the the word to use it, but I'm just evoking that inside of you. It's already inside of you, my man. So what you're saying is that um, this uh, spiritual uh, enlightenment. Are we gonna call it enlightenment? What what do you call it? Spiritual awakening. You you, you can call that. Sometimes when people call it like that, because there's so many connotations to enlightenment or spiritual awakeness, then it, people lose themselves in that. We can call spiritual the human clarity. experience. You can call clarity. You can call whatever you want to call it. I call gratitude. You, this the spiritual gratitude. You think you could have achieved it without jujitsu at one point in your life? One hundred percent. Although it's an extrapolation, and we will never know, because my journey was yes, through yeah. Jiu-Jitsu, it was through immigrating to America, it was through fighting injustice. That's how I did it. Now, an extrapolation that, would be unfair, but the answer is yes. That doesn't mean, though, that everybody who practices Jiu-Jitsu will reach this. No, nope. and it doesn't mean that if you don't practice Jiu-Jitsu, you also won't. 
Got it. I feel like um, you have different points of views of the most common beliefs in Jiu Jitsu, right? And maybe we can go over, I've been seeing your post recently. Do you want to go over what you consider the, the common myths in Jiu Jitsu? What do you think about touching one at a time? I, I've seen four. I don't know if there are more or you're planning on posting Let's more. Let's do it. But, I am um, planning on posting Yep. Well, first of all, what what brought you to to in a way trying to deconstruct the the common myths in jiu jitsu? I've been training my whole life under false premises, and I have been under the impression that once I would achieve a black belt or a certain social status in the community or such a f certain financial status or something circumstantial, I would feel confidence in myself. I would feel samurai serenity. I would feel childlike joy. I would believe that once I would achieve certain things, I would feel that wealth of being a king and being a leader or the freedom of a Zen master. And what I realized that after 19 years of training Jiu Jitsu, all those attributes are available to us right now. As long as we focus on them, as long as we know it's possible, and that is what I am doing right now. I, I basically had to go through the whole jiu-jitsu circle, bro, fighting on the streets in Brazil, coming to America, competing in Brazil, competing in America, being successfully uh, um, uh, accomplishments in the jiu-jitsu tournaments, and then Metamorias, and then I start teaching at Grace University, one of the biggest gyms in the world, associating myself with amazing people. And then teaching classes, 100 kids in the classes, law enforcement, like uh, the whole loop, bro. I don't think that there's something in Jiu Jitsu that I didn't do. Although I was not like 12 time world champion or anything close to that, uh, I was always around. I was around uh, everything that could be possibly be seen. And I did not see that in which was promised to me in those environments. So now all I'm doing, Mark, is I'm looking back and say, guys, everyone stop right there. If you're going there where I've been, trying to accomplish x y or z don't go because it's not there it's like that man like imagine the gold run people everyone's going to to a certain mountain to get gold but i just came from there and i'm saying bro the gold is not there and i mean it i really mean it i'm not trying to deceive you guys i'm not trying to make you guys quit jiu-jitsu all i'm saying is that if you're looking for warrior-like confidence samurai serenity childlike joy king-like wealth zen-like freedom it's not there it might be there for you guys, or it might be right here for you guys right now. You don't have to wait mm. 10, 15 years to access like the, the, the confidence of a warrior. You just don't. It's a myth. And that's where I am developing this way, is laying out the myths of jiu-jitsu, because I think that was the first myth right there, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see which one was it. I, ha I have it right here. Oh, yeah. Enhancing jiu-jitsu skills will give you confidence will give you the confidence you're looking for when because the people talk about jiu-jitsu training jiu-jitsu it will help your confidence with kids confidence and i think what they they're talking about is confidence to stand up for themselves against a bully for kids or for a man to confidence to protect their family in a fight going into a room knowing that if anything happens they're going to be okay and that that confidence was going to transfer into all other areas of their lives but um why why is it why is it that you're saying that jiu jitsu skills really won't give you that confidence so yeah that is 100% false in my opinion in which that jiu jitsu mm -hmm. will give you the confidence that you're looking for so first we have to be very methodical here on splitting the word confidence in two pathways. So mm -hmm. one pathway is probability of success. And the other pathway is no matter the circumstances. The one mm -hmm. that I'm talking about is that people want to have confidence no matter the circumstances. That's what we want. I want to know that if my daughter gets sick and I don't know what to do because I'm not a doctor, I'll have the confidence to know and to find the answer and to do my best in any given circumstance. And the other thing is like, man, maybe in order to be confident as a father, I need to be a doctor, which then would mean that the, my confidence is tied to the probability of success. 
Now, mm. undoubtedly, if you are a doctor and your child gets sick, you are you have more probability of success on dealing with that problem. Undoubtedly, if I am a black belt in jiu-jitsu, I am more confident in dealing with a physical altercation on the street. So that, that is probability of success. And that is true. If people train more jiu-jitsu, they will feel a little more confident on dealing with a problem. A child that knows jiu-jitsu will feel a little bit more confident on dealing with a bully. A doctor will feel a little more confident dealing with a, chi- a sick child. That's number one. That's granted. Now, uh, what I'm bringing is the confidence despite the circumstance. Because here's what I realized. I'm a black belt, high-level black belt, 220 pounds, 215, 20 pounds. I feel so confident in any physical altercation regarding knowing that I will do my best to win the fight. But what I also know and that's what I'm saying that no one else is saying, is that I don't know for sure. When I spar with a guy, with a person, what makes me very good, Marco, is that I don't know what's going to happen. So much that the sparring sessions or fights that I entered, confident that I knew what was going to happen, I lost. So the unknowing factor or ability to deal with the unknown is what gives me utmost confidence. My daughter, before teaching her any jiu-jitsu skill, I don't want her her confidence to be tied up to jiu-jitsu skills. Because what if the person is much bigger than them? What if the person has a gun to my head? And that's the story I'd say, Marco. Let's say there's someone with a gun, and forgive me, or, 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 or with your permission, I'm going to paint a very dark picture here for you. Is that okay? It's okay. Yes. Go ahead. So let's say someone has a gun to the head of someone you love. And you're far from that situation. You have no guns on you. You cannot throw a rock on them. Like, it's a 1% chance of you defending yourself and winning. Would you take that bargain? Would you do something about it? Yes or no? Yes. That confidence right there is the confidence that that I'm talking about. It's the confidence of no matter what. You have 1% chance and you still do whatever it takes no matter what and that's what we don't talk about it now maybe i'm me being a black belt would give me a 1.1 percent while there's someone that is not a black belt would give them 0.1 but the point is that because we focus so much on techniques and developing arm locks and chokes and leg locks and we watch this false champions and then we we pay pay pay-per-view to watch ufc and people punching each other in the face and that's what the community has become we don't talk about man what am i willing to die for marco Mm. what am i willing to die for what are the things that undoubtedly i will stand up and go no doubt no hesitation no uh, procrastination no distraction and that brings us the confidence of no matter what i tell you right now that I'm overtraining jiu-jitsu. I know too many, too much jiu-jitsu. I invested my time. <laughs> I mean it, bro. Like too much, unnecessary. I could have been much better in many other things in my life because what I know, Marco, also that my black belt friends don't know is that when I was a child, I had that confidence in myself. And I was fighting on the streets. I learned jiu-jitsu. I was 14 years old when I started training. Up to 14 years old, I had the same confidence that I have right now and I knew no jiu-jitsu. My question, mm. when I look at fight, I will not say I will not see their size. I would see like this. Am I willing to die for this situation right now? And if the answer is yes, I'm going to fight. If the answer is no, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I, I won a lot of fights and I lost a lot of fights. The crazy part is that the most fights that I won, I was willing to die for that. And I didn't die. Therefore, I won. And I defended what was worth defending. We get too tied up on like, oh, I'm good at jiu-jitsu. Therefore, I'm confident. Mm, I, don't, I don't like that. I think that's unfair. Because a lot of people are not going to get good. Most people that my students, 99% of my students are not going to get better than me. They just won't. So then what? Does that mean that they cannot be feel the warrior-like confidence? I disagree. Mm-hmm. I really believe that lining up ourselves with our values and virtues, we can access an unbelievable and unshakable confidence in ourselves, no matter who's in the room. We can shake people's hand, firm eye contact, and go with that energy. Reminds me reminds me of a story I just read like a couple of days ago on a cruise. Apparently the child fell off the the boat 
and the mom jump too. Both of them die. And I'm thinking about the mom, right? Uh, that's what you're talking about. The mom jumped. Yep. She probably didn't know if she was going to be successful, but she jumped regardless because she was willing to die. She was just... Courage is the word too? Uh, or is you make any difference? Courage, confidence, and when it becomes reckless too, do you want to make any difference between this concept, confidence, courage, reckless yes. behavior? Yes. So I love that. The um, I would put courage and confidence and willingness all kind of in the same pocket right there of what I'm talking about, right? This, this blind, no hesitation, no doubt, full assertiveness, full confidence. Imagine me shaking your hand, looking in your eyes and say, hey, man, how are you? Like that, the readiness, right? I'll put them in kind of the same category for the sake of communication. Now, the word reckless is interesting because when we think intellectually, what that lady did was reckless. When we think intellectually, you defend yourself against the guy that has uh, one a gun and 1% chance, that is reckless. So the logical thing to do is to, all right, my loved one is dead. The logical thing to do is not to jump out of a cruise to help the baby. But that's where jiu-jitsu is failing us, brother. Because we became too logical. And then we call these behaviors reckless. What I call reckless is not doing that and living with the burden of shame of not being who you are and not standing up for what you believe. So I'm just switching that because that for me is reckless. If I see injustice in front of me and I don't do anything about it or I pull my phone to record it, I think that that is reckless spiritually speaking or inside speaking, whatever word you want to use for it, because how can I live with the shame and with the, the, the inaction of not standing up in the presence of evil or impossible odds? We value our life a little bit too much in which we protect our lives, Marco, to a, to a point that now we have big houses and we're afraid of everything we're afraid of disease afraid of getting hurt afraid of being cut and that is that for me is death the overly protection of life that we are afraid of everything when we live with fear that for me is already dead you're already gone you just you just your body is just kind of having bodily function and that's yeah. what i'm kind of trying to bring back this idea of man connect with something that is more important than life some people call religion some people call i call values and virtues Whatever mm -hmm. it is that will bring that, that 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 passion in your life, because in my understanding, and that's just my point of view, if you're not living blindly passionate and committed and purposeful towards the things that you love, then what are we doing? Are we working nine to five to get retired and die of old age? That's what most people are doing it, and that's what, or we're training jiu jitsu, idolizing people that we don't even know their personal lives, we don't even know what they stand for. Just because they're good jiu-jitsu and they inspire us, now we're looking up to these mm -hmm. guys and and seeing people talk trash on each other on MMA. And I'm not going to mention names. You guys know everyone, but there's a lot of trash talking, yes. selling alcohol, steroid abuse. Like, that's... Th amen. And I get angry, Marco, because the jiu-jitsu community is under the impression that they're playing the same game that those guys are playing. And they're not. They're playing a game of steroids. They, they're playing a game of high performance. That is beautiful, good for them, but that's what I'm against. I'm against of them not speaking the truth. The truth is that they're playing a completely different game and the regular civilian will not access, and then they put themselves in a pedestal. So then we look up to these people, then we disempower ourselves. So now we're like, oh, it's reckless mm -hmm. to do what I believe. It is reckless. Bro, Marco, is it reckless for you to look up at a guy? Think about the best jiu-jitsu practitioner in the world that you think. Whatever. Don't even have to tell me his name. The guy that's going to tap you in 10 seconds. Let's say that person comes in, looks at you, and curses at you and slaps you in the face. Is he reckless to defend yourself against that person? I don't think no. so. I think that it's reckless not you. So, mm. Man, reminds me, I'm going to share with you a personal experience. When the pandemic hit, 
uh, I I am one of those people who go to bed and I just close my eyes in within a minute I'm out I'm sleeping <laughs> you know it doesn't take too much that's good but when the pandemic hit the first week we closed the school and I was in bed and I couldn't sleep man and I was so like why is happening like three in the morning I cannot sleep and I realized I was afraid I was afraid what's gonna happen am I gonna die and then what helped me was well first i was like i cannot i cannot live like this i can it was a very uncomfortable feeling to live with this fear you know everybody it was fear in the environment even right like news and everything but i heard uh hickson he said well the warrior is willing to die right and that like all right, if I, if I have to die, then I will die, is what maybe made me like, F this, I'm just gonna go and do what I have to do, you know? And whatever happens, happens. And how, finally, I felt a little bit in, in peace. Um, yep. Yes, I, I think that's what you were talking about a little bit, right? Yes. We, we once we find that in within us we realize that it's worth to live with the fear than to do what you have to do and do what you can do about it one more time just not to be redundant but back to the viking situation the vikings are invading the 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 intellectual right thing to do is for us to pack and run the reckless thing to do for some people is to pick up a sword and fight i don't agree with that I, I see the opposite because mm -hmm. I'm connected with something that is that is inside of us. It's a voice inside of my head. It's a voice inside of my heart. It's something, bro. I'm not gonna stand up in the presence of evil. I'm not gonna stand, tolerate this behavior. So therefore, if it, now it's my time, now it's my time, and that is what gives uh, the the confidence of no matter what. That we're talking in the beginning. Train your jitsu. Of course, we enhance your confidence in the likelihood of success. But if you only do that, you're gonna live hollow. Because the other half comes from this knowledge right here. And I actually mm -hmm. have a little story right here. I don't know if you... Um, it's very story. brief. I love to, yeah. Just yes, to, love to read with you right here. It's a koan. It's a Zen a practice. But koan. Do you know what that is? No. So I'll read Zen it to practice? you. It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a little story. I'll just read it to you. And okay. then later do a little research on what koan is. But it goes like this. It's very brief. During the civil wars in feudal Japan, an invading army would quickly sweep into a town and take control. In one particular village, everyone fled just before the army arrived. Everyone except the Zen master. Curious about this old fellow, the general went to the temple to see for himself what kind of man this master was. When he wasn't treated with the deference and submissiveness in which he was accustomed to, the general burst into anger. He was like this, you fool, he shouted and reached, as he reached out for his sword. Don't you realize that you're standing before a man who could run you through without blinking an eye? But despite the threat, the master seemed unmoved. So he answers. And do you realize, the master replied calmly, that you are standing before a man who can be run through without blinking an eye? Wow. Wow. Awesome. And that's what people forget, my man. Bruce Lee also yeah. talks a little bit about it. Like, man, you all want to know the art of winning, the way of victory. But you guys don't want to know the art of dying, the way of losing. And once you learn that, you're liberated from it. Doesn't mean that you're gonna die, but it means that you're liberated from it. And and he, I'm here to tell you guys in the Jiu Jitsu community that Jiu Jitsu techniques will not give you that. And that is the ultimate confidence that I'm talking about. Brother, uh, myth number two, Evandro. Training Jiu Jitsu training Jiu Jitsu makes you a better person. Every everybody says this. <laughs> <laughs> you disagree. I disagree. But it, it can though, right? Or tell us, why, why, why do you write this as the, the second myth? 
let me uh, enter right here. It's just exactly what I wrote. Change used to make you a better person and better in all aspects of your life. False. Truth. In order to become a better person, as a whole in Jiu-Jitsu, you need to actively seek and apply values, philosophies, and mindsets. So, here's why it's a myth. Because if training Jiu-Jitsu makes you a better person in all aspects of your life, if that is a fact, then everyone that trains Jiu-Jitsu and will be a better, a good person. And the better you are at Jiu-Jitsu, the best, better of a person you are. That's what we would be. So then we would turn on the TV and we would see these Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts and these MMA champions, and they would be amazing people. We would look at them like holy people and we're like, man, we're vouching them because they're so good at Jiu-Jitsu, bro. They're so good at Jiu-Jitsu. So if that's mm -hmm. the case, then they're better fathers than us. They're better people than us. They're more loyal than us. They have more virtues than us. That's what, That would be the truth. And although Jiu-Jitsu can be a tool to enhance your personal self, that's a fact. That's I agree. It can be. You see the difference right there? But it doesn't necessarily mean. Because how many people do we know in the Jiu-Jitsu community that we're like, man, I despise this person. I don't want to be around this person. It has nothing to do with me. This energy has nothing to do with me. It makes me a worse person. There's... It exists. So what makes us a good good people, Marco, is us using jiu-jitsu, using the confidence of jiu-jitsu and the practice of jiu-jitsu or the practices of carpentry or painting or music to enhance us as individuals, father, husband, friend, business owners, and applying those things. Because there's also the fact that we can learn and we cannot apply it. So... In order to become a better person, you need the tool, you need the vision, you need the value. And when you apply the three of them, you become better at any given thing. People that train Jiu-Jitsu, they forget about the, the vision, they forget about the value. They're just good at Jiu-Jitsu. So now you have all these guys that know how to fight that have questionable characters, to say the least. So it's just basically mm -hmm. calling out, like, man, it's not simply train Jiu-Jitsu to become a good person. Mm -hmm. That's false. And also, you cannot train Jiu-Jitsu and be an amazing person. How many people you... you you know, they don't change it, they're amazing people. Yes, yes, yes. Do you think that responsibility falls to the instructors, like to the leader of that organization? Like if the leader of that organization is like, train, I don't care how you win, no values, winning is everything. Uh, second place is trash, that, that culture of... Um, maybe unhealthy excellence right um yeah it that's where it comes from and it just go through the entire like all the students around and they the students of course are gonna just follow right um so the i love that comes, comes to from the the leader of the organization of the school to instill all those values together with the jiu-jitsu practice or is individually Mark, every student needs to find this on their own? I would love to answer simply, but I can't. Because this 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 question is just so good. And the short answer that we would like to believe that it would be yes. Oh yes, it's the instructor's fault because the instructor doesn't talk and the instructor guide other people. But if I would answer yes to that question, that would be me disempowering you and disempowering the students which then is hypocritical to what i said in the beginning the power is in within all of us so no matter the circumstances it's us it's on us the instructor mm -hmm. is teaching it's for you to believe the teaching the instructor is teaching is you for follow the teaching the guys on mma fighting and preaching trash talk and drugs and whatever it's for us not to watch it and not to vibe it and not to finance the power is in us it's i would love to point my fingers to the to the leaders and blame them but i can't i have to point a finger to me and say man what am i doing following this behavior just because this person is good at jiu-jitsu what am i doing wearing the shirt that says somebody's name and that person is not a person that i respect and admire in all aspects of life you are putting the shirt on no one is forcing you on you although some people they might be forced on 
and I respect that it's a, a small percentage they're being forced to something, but m the vast majority of us, we're not in that abusive behavior. We are allowing ourselves under the excuse that we're not good enough and that we're not powerful enough to question it. And you know how I know mm -hmm. that, Marco? I was that guy in a, a lot of times. A lot Which of times I, would, I, I, would, I was the guy that I was like, man, I'm, I cannot question Follow. this. Per ah. Like, I would feel less than my instructor a lot of times. Not every time, because since I'm a young kid, I have this fire inside of myself. But a lot of times I'm like, oh, then I guess that's what it is. But then I would go home and I was like, man, that doesn't feel right. So then I would choose my own beliefs, my own values over the values of my master. And that's what, mm -hmm. what all this movement that I'm creating is all about. I don't want to hate anyone. Everyone is free to do anything. You want to do drugs and compete on a high performance? Actually, you have to because everyone is doing it. So you, you're going to have to play the game. But I'm empowering the student to look at that and question, man, is that what I want for my life? Is that is this how I want to behave? You know, does that person represent me in all aspects of what a human being it is in my point of view? And then we take the power back. That's, that's the mission. What's... Um... Um, what's the worst, like for you, I, I heard you criticizing a lot about uh, using the asteroids. Um, what else, what are you actually most uncomfortable with in, in this culture and this Brazilian Jiu Jitsu culture? Is it the trash talking? Uh, is everything, can you uh, explain a little more into what yes. is really, what you think is wrong? What are you stand, standing up for in the jiu-jitsu culture? And you mentioned MMA culture too. Yeah. yeah. What I have nothing against someone using steroids. If you want to do it, do it, my man. I have nothing against trash talking. I have nothing against the freedom of speech and people behaving however they can, however they want. What I am against is the lies of jiu-jitsu. The lies. Is people, is people not? Yeah, the lies. The people lies. not speaking up. People don't say, "Hey, guys, just so you know, I am a freak of nature. I train twelve hours a day, and then I do steroids, and then I trash talking people. Although I don't hate these people, I have nothing against them. I'm just doing that to promote my fight, so I can make millions of dollars, so I can farm on your attention because you don't really need to watch me fight, but because I make it entertaining and I I create a whole drama around, then you guys like watching. And because of that, that's why, like, they don't say that. That, that, that. There's a lie mm -hmm. there. We believe that they really don't like each other. They don't. They have nothing against each other. They're just selling a, 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 a drama so we get curious about it. That's why the YouTubers are now, like, YouTubers fight against YouTubers. And we're like, oh, mm -hmm. oh who's going to win? They don't even care. They're just farming your attention. I see. You're literally wasting your life giving attention to people that, have, that do not have your best interest at heart. And that's what I'm against. I'm against black belts that tell students like this: "Hey, just keep training, and you're going to be as uh, you're going to be very good at jiu-jitsu, and you're going to become a better person." That's a that's false. That's not true. Keep training if that makes you happy. Keep training if that um, fulfills you. Keep training knowing that you're not going to be as good as most people that train because they're playing a different game than you. They're training 12 hours a day, six hours a day, and then doing steroids. So it's just it's just going to be tough. But keep training training because of that or i'd love instructors saying like this hey man like uh, i was telling another friend of mine you know when you sign the waiver in the in the, in the when you sign up to your gym mm -hmm. we unspokenly it said that we have the student best interest at heart that oh i'm here as an instructor and i i, mm -hmm. I have your best interest at heart and i'm gonna serve you and that's what it is, it's not said anywhere but that's what is unspokenly said and that's not the truth given my experience my experience is that the best interest at heart is the school owner and the mm -hmm. business first. And then there's also some, and I'm not saying everyone, okay? I'm just, mm -hmm. maybe some, some of you guys are not, and I believe that because I know some people are not, but the majority, I, my experience says that it is. And uh, the actual truth would be, hey, guys, welcome to the gym. As long as you keep paying membership, you belong here. As long as you don't question too much what I'm doing, you belong here. I would try my best to keep to make you better, but not as bad as good as I am, because I need to have a superiority over you. So 
I can keep the respect and I can keep you paying the, the GM membership because we all like that's that's just the truth that no one talks about. People don't mm -hmm. want the, the students to be better than them. Most people because they lose the, the, the they lose the perceived power. You see, that's why there's the belts and then there's the red belt and then there's the white and black. There's 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 things that are not being spoken. And that I think that answers your question, my man. As long as everyone's putting the truth on the table and letting the students choose, mm -hmm. then I'm okay with that. Then no problem at all. Let's do steroids and do MMA and do tournaments. Got and, it. Just be honest about it. Yep. Now, would you say the majority of the schools are like this? Have this, uh, what you're saying, where the instructor has the best interest for himself and he's not being honest with the students. Is that the is that the most common case? Are schools like that are the most common cases than the schools where it's a more healthy environment? Would you say that, or they well, are deception? I can, speak, I can only speak from my own experience, right? Because that's a, a data, actually a data that I do not have it. Now, what I can do is just an extrapolation, giving what I see on the vastly widely uh, result as the jiu-jitsu community and as what we consume in pay-per-view and who we idolize as champions and the schools that I've been in contact to, it is a fair assumption that the vast majority is withholding in one way or another. I have no doubt that there are small gyms or um, beautiful places, I actually know a bunch of them, that people, that they're honest, they're open, they create a very safe environment, an environment that is up for growth, and there's not a lot of idolization. They do exist, but there are oases in a desert giving mm. where the attention of jiu-jitsu is and where the jiu-jitsu community is. I stopped consuming uh, jiu-jitsu tournaments and watching fights mm. for a long time now, bro. I want to say like almost more than 10 years, man. I just don't watch it. I can't. It just makes my body feel bad because of the mainstream of jiu-jitsu. I see. Uh, should we go to the last uh, myths? You have to compete Good. in order to progress and prove your worth. Yep. What do you think about that? You have to compete in order to progress. I, I think that if you compete, uh, you will progress. Um, I think competing is a very good uh, experience and it's probably going to help your jujitsu prove your worth uh no i i think i agree on that one right you don't have to compete to prove your worth but are you talking about your jujitsu world like your word that you are you are a worthy blue belt or worth of uh you're a worthy person uh maybe you can uh expand on this Evandro. yes i'd love to clarify so first to answer your question is a lot of people in the jiu-jitsu community they have their jiu-jitsu worth tied to their personal worth mm -hmm. if they're not a good blue belt they're not worth as a person they get upset if they're not a good purple belt if they're, they're ashamed of their black belt they're ashamed of their brown belt that exists on the high level every level people are ashamed somehow so that would be number one, man. If you can discern self-worth from jiu-jitsu performance, then we're winning. And that's all what, all what I am all about. I'm not about stop competing. I'm not saying stop competing. I'm saying that if your worth and your jiu-jitsu worth are together, then you feel like you have to compete. Then you finance institutions and organizations that don't have your best interests at heart. That's number one right there. So... The, the, uh, the beginning is that you have to compete in jiu-jitsu in order to progress. And Marco, I agree with you. If you compete, you will improve your jiu-jitsu most of the times. There are so many benefits to competing. You know that. You have butterflies mm -hmm. in your stomach. That's a benefit mm -hmm. on how to deal with that. Your heart yes. goes fast. You have diarrhea. You throw up. Like all those, those things, man, those are invaluable benefits. They can only experience them in a real fight or in a tournament. Bro, one time I went to a tournament and I, I wanted to throw up, but nothing will come out. And then I went to the bathroom and I was just feeling so weak. I look yep. at myself in the mirror. I was this close to just not show up, yep. but I did. I went, yep. I did, I lost, 
but I was so happy. And yep. I think that was the best for me was like, I overcame this and I, I appreciate yep. that I went to compete just so I could, uh, in a way, know what I'm capable of, like on the yep. face of shut adversity. down, basically adversity, I was able to keep going and, and step So on. Marco, I agree 100%, man. The benefits of competing are unmeasurable. Those are more the psychological part. Even on competing, you something happens with your jiu-jitsu. You become a little tougher mm -hmm. and you learn some stuff. You learn about yourself. I agree with that. But listen to this. My myth is you have to compete in jiu-jitsu tournaments in order to progress. And that is the lie. People don't have to compete at all. That is one pathway of progression. Another pathway of progression is not to compete and to take care of your family and to uh, focus that time in business. Another pathway of progression as an individual and in jiu-jitsu is to go watch a lot of classes. Another pathway of progression is to teach classes. You, you yeah. see that? So, so that's yes. uh, that's all I'm doing, man. Uh, there's a lot of people blind by the black belt, what I call it, right? They're blind by, oh, I have to compete. I have to. My worth is tied. I have to. You don't. Relax. Enjoy your life. You mm -hmm. only have one life to live. If you feel called to compete, compete. If you don't, you don't. And you still belong here. You're still in the jiu-jitsu pathway. Now, it's very easy for me because I'm a competitor and because I'm good, I preach competition. So if my student don't compete, I don't promote him. If the student don't compete, I don't give him a special attention. And then that creates segregation. And I think that's unfair, especially under the premise that it's one, it's a, it's false. It's not true. That's not the only way to progress in jiu-jitsu. And secondly, it's very convenient for the instructor to say that because then he, he dictates the narrative. It's arbitrary. And that's what I'm against, Marco. You follow me? The, the the instructor that has the power, he creates a narrative arbitrarily. And now if you don't follow what I'm saying, then you're worthless. You should not be here. And you're not, you don't know what Jiu Jitsu is. And that's not, just not true. So some schools promote students because this, this white belt has been tapping blue belts. Now you deserve a blue belt. Or these blue belts has been tapping all the blue belts and some purple belts, so therefore let's give him his purple belt. How would you promote if it's not that criteria, Evandro, in your school? You won't promote based on uh, performance. You promote, you will promote students based on what? Great question. I completely understand the belt system and the comparison of tapping other people. So we create a hierarchy, which is arbitrary, actually, if you think about it, right? If, you, if I get a blue belt from Brazil and I put him in front of a brown black belt here in America, I'm not sure what's going to happen, man. And even the other way around, right? I'm, and it's not exclusively Brazil, but the belt is arbitrary. We just have, we compare with a little bubble around us and then that becomes your belt. And if you really, really try to measure performance, number one is in possible because the world is too big there's too many people out there and number two who am i to you know dictate here i like it's very tough it's a very tough question now my solution for it which i don't suggest that you guys do it i'm not saying that everyone should follow this but i do not promote people anymore I don't even want to talk about belts. I don't even want to talk about blue, brown stripes. Mm -hmm. This is time of my life that I could be talking about something that actually has relevance in making my jiu-jitsu better or making my me as better as a father or making me better as a businessman or making me better at any other thing. And, and we a lot of times confuse the symbol of something with the very something. And there's hours and hours a week that people are talking about the symbol, which is the belt, and not talking about the very wealth, which is the activity. Eating better, having healthier thoughts, having healthier uh, behaviors, being a little kinder with yourself. You, know, you, you want your juice to get better? Be a little kinder with yourself. That will help. Or, depending on the level that you are, you're going to have to be a little harsher on yourself. That is actually wealth that will make an impact in your life in a tangible way, then you're putting a, a, a different color stripe in your belt, which that's the base of it. The other problem of it is that it's, it's based on the 
agenda of the instructor. And that's what people don't talk about as well. The instructor has an agenda that one of the criteria is performance. Other criteria, Marco, and I would love to hear if you experienced this, if you've seen this or not, but it's politics. If you're more closer to the instructor, you might get promoted a little bit more. It's not only on performance. If the instructor wants you to start becoming an instructor at the gym, chances are they're going to get her black belt a little bit faster because he needs a black belt instructor to run a business to have more students. People don't talk about that, but I've seen that many, many times. Yes. So as long as the people know those things, then I'm okay with it. But people don't know because people don't talk about it. And I think that's unfair and I don't like that. Cool. But you do see the value of when people is like the black belt is something to look forward, right? Like, um, mm. like it's important to have like a goal. Don't you think that's at least a little bit of the value of having belts of like, okay, I got my blue belt. All right, maybe I can be a purple belt. Let's keep training. Let's keep going. And then once so, I get the purple, so I'm the question. brown belt. I'm so close. I might as well keep training. And that's like, gives you a little bit of accountability. If you, if you didn't have that goal, we'll be like, uh, what am I even doing this? Don't you see the, the value on those, these ranks or you don't agree with this? Yeah, I would all love and respect Marco. I completely disagree with that brother. Mm. And the reason why is because do you want to have a million dollars or do you want to have food in your fridge? And both of them are not necessarily true. For example, if you go to a, if I throw in a desert island, and on that desert island, you're going to stay there for six years. You want to have a million dollars or you want to have a fridge with food? Water. One is the symbol, <laughs> water. There we go. One is the symbol, the other one is the actual wealth. So what you're saying is that the symbol helps. identify the actual goal and wealth and i agree with that it helps identify now what mm -hmm. if instead of going to the gym and saying hey i want to be a purple belt or i want to more stripes or i want to be a black belt what if we change the focus to the actual wealth of human beings what if like like and, and this is a, a a dream world right here right entertain this mm -hmm. with me real quick imagine yes. we go to the gym and we're like man i would like to be as honest as Marco, or I would like to be as kind as Evandro. How do I do that? I would like to be as honorable. I would like to be as grateful. I would like to be as tough. I would like to be as confident. And then we focus on the actual thing. I would like to be a bro. Bro, I would like to be a better husband. Let me tell you right now, Marco. I call all my friends, my man, and I ask about husband advices. As a father, I'm pretty confident right now. But that's I, I don't call people and say, hey, man, I want to be married for 30 years. I call my my friends and say, "Hey, man, I want to be a better husband right now, so I can enjoy being a husband, because I I it's it's been tough. Marriage is tough. It's tough. You follow me? It's tough. Being a father. I don't call my friends and say, "Hey, man, I would like to be a black belt. I you see, I call my friends and say, "Man, how can I how can I be more confident in myself? How can I, how can I speak the truth? How can I look at people in the eyes and not feel fear? That's the question that I want to know. The belt doesn't matter, and that's what I'm answering for people, man. I'm telling blue belts, you do not have to wait." To be a black belt to not feel afraid of other people anymore you do not have to wait to be 10 years bro 15 years to be a black belt to find people that have similar values than you you follow me my man does that make mm -hmm. sense this, this shift that i did right here yes yes i understand very good uh let's go La last minute evandro do you have time <laughs> because we're going over a little bit the the hour, yep. but maybe we can discuss the last, last yep, few. Yep, let's do it. All right, I'll stay here for forever talking with you, but I know it. You might be, have other things to do. Um, my myth you, number brother. four: there is no ego in jujitsu. Because the common phrase is "leave your ego at the door," and that that's yep. something that jujitsu schools really preach because what they actually are asking the student is to like don't just go to the gym and crush everybody so you can feel like 
good about yourself, right? So the idea is leave your ego at the door, just come here and have fun. And yes, so the ego, the ego thing, right? It's very, very common in jujitsu talking about the ego or that guy's parts yep. that he has too much ego or he tap, he is a purple belt and he tap black belts and now he's acting like he owns the gym or <laughs> it's a lot of ego or even a visitor come and now we have the mad enforcer, somebody who has to show him what we're all about. So it's also protecting our ego. Tell, tell us about this myth uh, do you think that schools feel like uh, they promote an egoless environment, but you think that's false? In reality, there's a lot of ego in the jiu-jitsu culture. Can you expand on this? Yes, you, you're you right. There's all, all these phrases, leave the ego, the ego at the door. And I believed that, and I tried, man, to master my ego, and I would like... Because man, if if they're telling me, then I'll do it. Because I'm I, I look up to this instructor. But then man, guess what? The more I grew, by the way, I was the mad enforcer. My instructor would say, "Hey, leave the ego at the door." But then when a visitor would come in, he would come to me and say, "Hey man, go there and kill that guy. Make it look easy." And <laughs> so then I was like, all right. Nah, "All right, like I just I just that's that's one of the things I was like, all right." master i'll do that because i'm good and you're telling me to do although it's kind of doesn't make sense because leave the ego at the door so which one but that's why it took me so many years and that's why i'm only coming with this message right now because now i'm fully solid on everything i'm saying and that's number one right number two is that what happens brother is that the ego changes clothing and although you're right on that basic ego that people talk about, hey, I don't want people here crushing everyone and feeling good about themselves. That's the kind of the first baseline. And that's what they try to accomplish by saying, leave the ego at the door. And I understand that. Now, what I do not like and what I'm speaking against is that that same person, he now moves the ego one layer up in the tower. Let's say there's a tower of ego. The entry, mm -hmm. the floor is that ego that you just talked about. And then there's mm -hmm. level two ego is like, oh, I don't inspire with my students because I'm the instructor and I teach too many classes. So I'm a little bit better than you, but I don't expose myself too much. So they hide behind this instructor role and then they stop sparring with the students because they know they're going to lose, but they don't say that. They don't say, Hey man, I love to spar with you, but I'm kind of tired because I taught a lot of classes. And I really believe that you're so good. Although you're not better than me, you're so good. that you might tap me today and because of that, I'm not going to spar with you. They don't say that. They just, no, not today. And then there's this vibe like, Hey, you cannot, you cannot ask a higher belt to spar. Like there's this, this this thing in the culture, like you do not ask a higher belt. If you do that, you're being disrespectful. Like, like what? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. So that's ego. The that's other way ego. of that, the, yeah. The other way the ego presents itself is the the higher belts. They if you go a little higher there on a higher belt, and you tap or almost tap the higher belt, what happens, Marco? Do they shake hands? Oh, hey man, good for you. Life is good. You got me. There's tension, sometimes right? they do. There's tension. And now, even if there is verbal, like, hey, man, good for you, next time they come back to spar with you, there's a whole tension now, man. And we know that because we experienced that. And now two things happen. What I did was I was like, man, there's tension, there's tension. I don't care about belts. Let's keep going. And I'm going to keep tapping you if I can. But a lot of students, which also happened with me a little bit, we deem ourselves down a little bit. We're like, oh, I'm not going to go as hard. I'm not going to tap that guy because he's my instructor. And now there's this whole, whole ego trip happening right here. And then it transforms to um, maybe if you are better than your instructor, which happened with me a few times, then they create a new level of probation, which is like, yeah, man, but I'm a world champion and you're not. Or I'm three stripes and you're not. That's why even though you're better than me, even though you can teach class better than me, even though I no, I'm the guy because X, because I trained you for 50 years. Because I'm a red belt, because I'm like because of whatever. So they always keep this probation, which again I think that is, is kind of necessary to keep hierarchy. I'm not against hierarchy. I think that's important and it, and it should be respected. And I respect that. You see, but yeah. back to my my enemy. The enemy is the lies. People don't say that. They don't say that if you try a little harder on me, I'm going to destroy it to prove you how little you know. 
and I was just playing with you. That's why you were able to tap me. They don't say that out loud. They just do it. And then it feels bad and there's toxic energy. Or the, the, the last level would be people, they will find a way to feel better than, the, feel more than you. Could be even money, man. They're like, all right, you're better than me, but I am better looking than you. Or I have more money than you. You're just a guy that trains. Of course you're good because you train, you train three hours a day and I'm a business owner and I only train one hour a day and I have a family. That's why you're better than me. So then they justify them. So that's ego again, bro. There's so many ways, man, and I bet that you can talk about some other ways that you experience. And that's that's in all level, man. The white belts have ego, the black belts have ego, the gym owners have ego, the legends of jujitsu, the, the royal family, they all have egos, bro. They're all there, man. But just not, they're not talking about it, and I don't like that. Now, would you would you consider that a little bit of ego is is good and necessary? Yeah, yeah. It's it's part of life. It's part of who we are. It's necessary. I understand that. I'm not against ego at all. What I'm against is people preaching, leave the ego at the door, while they cultivate their own ego in ways that these students cannot even see. The things that I'm talking about, most students, they don't even know that that thing existed. I say the example on my post, like, you go to, you go to a school and then a guy destroys you. And then they, he's proving his ego to you. Although in the math said, leave the ego at the door. He proved the ego to you, and then you, because you don't know that that's what they're doing, because you left your ego at the door, mm. then you <laughs> then you say, oh, man, you're so good. Wow. And then they start idolizing. Mm. And when you start idolizing, they pay membership. They pay pay-per-view. Now, boom, they're indoctrinated under a false assumption and under a lie. I say this often, that when you enter Jiu-Jitsu school, you get a, a belt tied around your waist, and you get another belt tied around your eyes. And that's one example of that. Nice. Awesome, Evandro. It's been great talking with you. Um, I don't know if you have something else to add. Um, I feel like uh, these are all good and important uh, topics that need to be discussed. Because you're right, there's, there's a culture of jujitsu that it does, and you know what? I've seen it in tournaments mo mostly because in my school, I, I try of the best I can to have a healthy environment. Everybody feels safe, you know. But I, when I go to other to tournaments and I see how other schools do it, for example, uh, yelling at at kids, you know, yelling at kids because <laughs> this coach was saying, "Why are you crying? Why are you crying?" The kid got choked. You know, come on, man. He's a kid, of course. He lost his crying. He's, uh, and things like that. Or you see, yeah, the guys uh, full of asteroids and just it's all about the glory. Um, and then you feel like something is, 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 is off, right? Something is off. Like, suppose, is this is supposed to be a martial art. It's supposed to make yes, uh, people better. But it's not accomplishing that. And that's your what you're going after, Evandro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cool. Um, anything else you you want to add? Something? A message? Uh... Yes. I would just like to thank you, Marco. Thank you for the time, for the platform. Uh, I I really believe that I do not have all the answers, and I'm not here to preach what is right or what is wrong, but I do believe. That if all of us are willing to speak the truth, the real and raw truth, all of us will benefit from. Because then we'll be able to create an environment that actually delivers what is promised. And we have the best martial arts, arguably, arguably, the best martial arts in our hands. And the environment that we create, it's not the best environment. And the community is not the best, the most welcoming community. I have this story that I was in Brazil one day. Not, but maybe two years ago, and I went to a skateboarding tournament just to watch. A friend of mine was there, uh, pretty famous in Brazil. So I just went there to kind of see what's up. Skateboarding in a Brazil dungeon, and Marco, like it's hard to explain what I felt there. They were competing against each other. But there was a certain love and admiration towards the other person succeeding. 
and they were all kind of the same like vibe they were cheering for everyone it was very very interesting my my i don't know how but if we can somehow learn from that maybe even the, the, that culture and i'm sure that they have other problems that i don't know but there was something that was like man what a competition i feel good here this feels so fun it feels welcoming people are trying their best and even if they go against each other that's okay it was something very unique man i never felt anywhere else and just to close, whoever is listening to this, you guys have in within yourself, man, the power to achieve those things. You do not have to be in probation. I'm basically giving permission to get out of any arbitrary probation that someone that you look up to put you in. Because you are a human being. You deserve to be here. Whether you're better than them as jiu-jitsu or not, there is hierarchy. There is some respect to be respected because those people are, you know, they, they, they give us a lot. But looking beyond their words, start looking at their actions so you can make a best decision based on truth and based on what is best for yourself. And I don't know what's best for yourself, but you know, as long as you give yourself permission to access that and you trust that voice in within, my guys, you guys are set. Awesome. Great message. Evandro, um, where can people find you? Are you still teaching? the gst courses yep how's it uh how people can find you if they want to listen to more of of what you were you've been talking about main platform is instagram at evandro grateful i answer every dm i answer i try my best to answer every comment and dm that i can so that's how you're going to find me instagram evandro grateful i also am on facebook at evandro grateful a little less active there but you can find me there as well and I do teach GSTs all over the country under the Grace University organization. And, and this is it, more podcasts and talks. And that's my, my, on top of teaching law enforcement officers, my second mission is Blind by the Black Belt, which is what we're discussing today. And I also have a social project about to be, to be launched in Brazil, which is Jiu-Jitsu mm. for free for everyone that cannot afford. People have no wow. money to buy belts. Like we talk about belts yeah. as if like they don't even have money to buy a belt. Like, <laughs> no geese. so don't they deserve jujitsu? And that's my, that those are my three missions right there. If you want to be part of, of any of them in any way, shape or form, send me a DM, keep in touch, follow me on Instagram or Facebook and I'm available at your service as the, the to the best of my ability. Awesome, Evandro. Thank you so much, brother. Take care and I hope to see you soon one day. Marco, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All the love to you, man. Thank you. See you later.